the action. This is the way the arena was earlier today, 4.30 p.m. to be exact, getting readied for thousands of to-be-arriving spectators. At 6, it was like this, and the air of expectancy hung heavy over the arena. And then... This is the way it is now, 7.30 p.m. We await the arrival of the two fighters, Leonard and Hearns. Celebrities everywhere, Bill Cosby... Jack Nicholson, Richard Pryor, and Burt Reynolds, straight from the Cannonball Run. Film director John Houston, Mike Connors, Vetus Carolitis, and the U.S. Open tennis champion John McEnroe, Wayne Newton, David Brenner, and a very special one, Sugar Ray Leonard Jr. Fighters should be along in a moment. Tommy Hearns is now coming down toward the ring. You see him in the middle of your screen bouncing up and down. Tommy Hearns, a peculiarly constructed man. Six feet, one and a half inches tall, but he weighed in at only 145 pounds, suggesting to some that he might be overtrained. His greatest weapons, a tremendous punching power. That's one. The other, an awesome reach for a welterweight, 78 and a half inches. He will have an eight inch edge in reach over Sugar Ray Leonard. Forget any listings of Leonard at 74 and a half inch reach because we measured him. He's at 70 and a half. Thomas Hearns, who in the late going, became the favorite then after the weigh-in went back to a pick'em situation thomas hearns with a record of 32 0 and 0 30 knockouts a tremendous repeat again puncher he is the wba welterweight champion he entered the ring first because he lost the flip of a coin There is Sugar Ray Leonard as he comes down toward the ring, surrounded by his entourage, security people, the inevitable Angelo Dundee, Jenks Morton, Sugar Ray Leonard, the WBC welterweight champion, weighed in at 146 today, perfect for him. 31 and 0, that's his record with 21 knockouts. This will be his fifth title defense of the WBC version of the title. So many intangibles lodged in this fight as Leonard comes up toward the ring itself. So many, because clearly Hearns is desperate for recognition and desperate for the kind of money that Sugar Ray Leonard has already banked. For Leonard, the motivation of fight is pride to establish to the public that he is truly great. We'll be back at ringside in Las Vegas in a moment. 15 rounds of boxing for the undisputed welterweight championship of the world. Introducing, in the blue corner, fighting out of Palmer Park, Maryland, weighing in at 146 pounds, the WBC welterweight champion, Sugar Ray Leonard. The thing to remember about Leonard, he is a far better puncher than he is given credit for. And in the red corner, from Detroit, Michigan, he is the WBA welterweight champion of the world, undefeated in his professional career, introducing Thomas, the Motor City Cobra, Hearn, 15 rounds of boxing. The thing to remember about Hearns, he is a far better boxer than he is given credit for. Quickly, the rules. 10-point must scoring system, scoring done by three judges. Three knockdown rule wave, mandatory eight count, no saving by the bell. The tail of the tape, you see it there. The principal feature, that eight-inch edge in reach enjoyed by Thomas Hearns. The other thing already noted by me, the fact that Hearns came in at only 145 pounds. We'll see if he's been stripped of whatever stamina he has. Stamina may be a question for Thomas Hearns. 
the bell for round one. Quickly look to see what the tactics of Leonard will be. And perhaps Hearns will fight more carefully than had been thought. Leonard quickly with the foot movement. It's a good sized ring, 20 by 20. Plenty of room to negotiate. Leonard has said he will use much lateral movement in the manner of the way he fought in the Montreal Olympics. Hearns trying to get to Leonard from afar with that long reach advantage. Leonard picking off the first two attempted left jabs with his gloves. We are one minute into round one. See how quickly Leonard got out of that corner? To stay there is to invite disaster with the stunning punching power that Tommy Hearns possesses. Little figures in each corner. Manuel Stewart, Hearns' corner, the man who constructed the very great Bronk Jim group in Detroit. And of course, Dundee and Jank Sport. Sugar with a quick flashing right. Called attention in some of Hearns' past fights to his habit of letting the left hang low at the side, thus exposing himself, perhaps, to a quick flashing right lead such as Leonard possesses. But so far, Hearns has been holding the left up better. For a minute 55 into round one. Cautiously fought first round, particularly on Leonard's part. Hearns trying to reach him from afar. But Hearns not going in with any reckless abandon notes. These men, despite their professions of dislike for one another, respect one another. 30 seconds left in round one. Drop during the course of the fight, you'll see many celebrities you recognize. For a moment there, you saw got a glimpse of Muhammad Ali. Good left lead by Leonard in the neck area. End of the round at hand. Play. Let's look at it again in slow motion. Watch Sugar Ray Leonard's actions closely. Right there. And that's when Hearn struck him. And there was Davy Pearl interceding. The round two underway. Key to the first round was caution. Each fighter respectful of the other. If there was an edge, it would have to go, I suspect, to Thomas Hearns if there was an edge. Certainly there were no telling blows. Notice the constancy of movement by Sugar Ray Leonard. His last two fights were most unimpressive against Ayub Kaluli and Larry Bonds, causing many to think that perhaps he had become a banker, not a boxer. Long flicking left by Hearns. Somewhere along the way, Leonard, if he's to win, must prove he can get inside that reach and score. Heat is certainly going to be a factor tonight. I have a thermometer here at ringside with me. It is in the area of 98 to 100. But up in the ring itself, under the lights, it is above 110 degrees. Stamina, if it goes a long way, will be a telling fact. The fight goes a long way. This is 
second round action. We verge on two minutes into the second round. Leonard to the right of your screen, Hearns to the left. Hearns posturing, and Hearns caught Leonard with a good right. And Leonard felt it. 45 seconds left in round two. Leonard utterly intense with his eyes. As one remembers the second round demo demolition of Pepino Cuevas by Hearns. One keeps looking for that explosive Hearns right. Second round is about over. From ringside Las Vegas, Nevada, round Leonard against Hearns. First round, nothing much done. Could have been scored even the second round based upon a good blow in the middle of the round by Hearns. I'd have to give the round to Thomas. Unofficial subjective score. Leonard steadily good exchange and Leonard may have been rocked a little Leonard is posturing and saying oh no you didn't hurt me well he better be careful from his point see him duck out from that corner he stayed there too long, in my opinion, asking for trouble. Still has to figure out how to get to Hearns. That reach advantage is, as I said, awesome. We're a minute 20 into round three. Look at the intensity in Leonard's eyes. the battle plan of Leonard fight his fight the quick flicking left caught Leonard and let Kearns wear himself down that is clearly the battle plan then take advantage of Hearns lapses later good right by Leonard Hearns the aggressor all the way thus far no question this about Hearns. He's an excellent counter puncher. That's what Leonard has to be wary about if he uses the right lead. Leonard got in a good combination then and ducked under Hearns' blows. Hearns' left is moving lower than it was in the first round. It is more to his side. The familiar Hearns swings by Leonard. Hearns a better boxer than people give him credit for. Leonard opening up on Hearns. Surprise. Good right by Hearns. First round where there have been some good exchanges. Rung for round four as we come to you from ringside in Las Vegas. Sugar Ray Leonard, left of your screen. Thomas Hearns, right. Third round. First time that Sugar Ray Leonard began to become aggressive. He did it midway through the round. He startled Hearns, I think, at that point with his aggressiveness. Scored a good combination, then scored several more blows. Hearns responded, but not as frequently or as effectively, I don't think, as Leonard. I scored the third round for Leonard. Now we are 
about 45 seconds into round four. Seeing Leonard with that intense face, picking off, turns his blows from long range with his club. Cautious fighting again here in round four. See, Lennon tried to get to the midsection, but you saw how quickly he covered. That's the problem, fighting this peculiarly constructed man with that big reach advantage and with the tremendous punching power. You must never leave yourself unprotected. This round is in the pattern of the second round. Tom, Thomas Hearns, the aggressor. Fighters fighting warily. Leonard scoring well left for the first time in the round. 50 seconds left in round four. <laughs> Leonard with a good right as Hearns dropped his left. into an inside exchange. Fifteen seconds left in the fourth round. Hearns with a good right. Hearns with a long right to the chest. Hearns missing with a right, and then trying to pour in. It's the end of round four. The bell for round five. I thought Leonard was hurt just before the end of round four, which was clearly a very effective round for Thomas Hearns. And there's the beginning of a welt under Leonard's left eye. Welterweight championship of the world at stake to be unified once and for all. combat that reach. Eight inch reach advantage for Thomas Hearns. To me it seems to be at this point the decisive factor in the fight. Fighting for pride. I want the world to know I'm one of the greatest fighters in French and pound for pound who has yet fought. The money doesn't matter. That's what Leonard said. Hearns, this is it for me, definitely. I want the recognition. I'm entitled to it. I'm a better fighter than Leonard. I'll not predict the outcome, except that I'll win. That right lead scored there by Leonard. Followed with a left in combination. This is fifth round action. We're a minute and 50 seconds into the round. Ernst's left keeps going lower and lower. Stewart, his manager trainer, says it's sucker's bait. He likes his fighters to keep their left low. Well, I saw two of them in the National Amateurs in Concord, California. They both got knocked out by rights. Twenty-five seconds left in round five. 
It's a much better round for Leonard. Burns starting to posture, as you can see. Pretending the bowler that he's getting ready for a bolo punch in the manner that Leonard did against Duran in Leonard Duran 2 at New Orleans. Correction, the first five rounds. At the end of the fifth round, I take it you were aware that Thomas Hearns was dictating the action. I would say he was, but I never thought that I was losing. I, when I knew the fight was close. I never believed that I'm losing a fight. I had control. I was moving. I was trying to frustrate him, but uh, he stayed on top of things. In other words, you were fighting according to your battle plan, hoping that he'd use himself up early and you could later dictate the action. Exactly. I tried to make him uh, exert himself in the earlier rounds so I could dominate the late rounds. But that's when the swelling started. It started in the second round. And I knew I had to go to work because um, I had anticipated that once he got a good shot on me and the left eye, it would swell. I take it, Thomas, you were perfectly happy with the way things were going at the end of the fifth round. Oh, most definitely, Howard. I was very much satisfied. I thought that everything was going over very well for me, Howard. Um, I thought that I was boxing really good. Um, which that people always criticized me as not being a good boxer. So my basic thing was to come in and try to box and look good at boxing, not to get in there and try to slug with Ray or try to outpunch him. Basically, that's what my thought was. That's why I wasn't in there trying to throw heavy shots, real heavy blows, So, because um, I was based, my, in my mind, I was thinking about just going boxing. Also, out. you're each being careful, weren't you? Each having a great respect for the other. True or not true? Oh, I had respect for Tommy the minute we signed a contract because I didn't want to look against. <laughs> and the same was true of him. Yes, the same with me. I have a great deal of respect for Ray, which uh, I always have said that Ray was a very good fighter, and I respect him as a person as well as a fighter. Well, it certainly shows now. The whole thing, a thing of the past. Under any circumstances, we'll pick up with round six in a moment. Bell just sounded for round six. We're at ringside Las Vegas, Nevada. Leonard against Turns. Many of the experts around here, they didn't think it would go this long. That's how confident they were in the late going that Hearns would quickly dispose of Leonard. He may dispose of Leonard, but that kid is a great athlete. Sugar Ray Leonard. left by Hearns. Glad to pick one compelling factor in the fight thus far, and clearly, as you watch this fight, has to be the Hearns edge in reach. The ability to force the fight. that Hearns was, in fact, overtrained. Remember that ring is about 110 degrees in there. has not yet found a way to get to Hearns consistently. Oh, now ah, Leonard hurt Hearns. And Leonard is trying to get at him. Leonard is now giving it to Hearns, and Hearns is hurt. Now Hearns is posturing, showing his mouthpiece. But no question, he was hurt. He was a little bit staggered. Now he's trying to fight back. It came from nowhere. We've got 30 seconds left in the sixth round. And this time, Leonard 
Hyatt has really become the aggressor in the fight. He's, he hurt him again by the left. He's got Hearns hurt. Hearns has not had this happen to him. Look at him. But the end of the round at hand. And the bell sounds for the end of the round. Look at Thomas Hearns. Wobbly as he goes back. Slow motion. Watch Leonard. Sixth round action. At left. Sent Hearns back. Head snapped back. Now Hearns beginning to be defenseless. But look at that. Hurled against the ropes by the force of a blow. Now you will see Leonard go to the midsection. And that's what really weakened Thomas. Leonard with a body attack that reduced and lowered the guard and enabled Leonard to take charge of the fight suddenly in the sixth round. Round seven, Las Vegas, Nevada. This capacity crowd standing as one as Sugar Ray Leonard for the first time in the fight clearly took over in the sixth round and had Hearns staggered not once but twice with telling left hooks. Now Hearns coming right back and Leonard's gonna learn one thing. There's no quitting Tommy Hearns and he's gonna be steadily careful. Again, I see no evidence that Hearns was in fact overtrained and that punching power is still lodged there. Yet Leonard appears ready to risk aggression now where he would not do it until the sixth round. He knew he had Hearns hurt. It was the feeling in Leonard's corner that had the last round gone another 30 seconds, Leonard could have put him away. But that's a feeling in a corner for their fight. That doesn't mean it's true. Leonard's left eye appears puffy under the eye. Leonard scoring again, giving Hearns with the left touch. Hearns backing off to the ropes. Sugar Ray Leonard with much better punching power than he has ever been credited for. Hearns pushing him on. How this fight came alive. Last round. Dreamed it would be toe-to-toe, -to -toe. and look at Hearns, he almost went down, he almost went down. Leonard pouring it on him, Hearns' arms appear to be tired. His fists have been carried low. Hearns in the corner, Hearns holding on now, leaning all over Leonard trying to collect himself, get himself together. We have less than a minute to go in round seven. Giving it to Hearns in the belly. Hearns is left low, using the belly to bring that guard down even further. Using that left uppercut from time to time, something he failed to do against Wilfred Benitez, but is doing here tonight. now looking for the opportunity. If he tries to load up, he's crazy. He should just keep working the opponent the way he has been. There's the right lead. Turns again, holding on. Davy Pearl separating the fighters. There's the right lead again. And the end of the round is here. Thomas Hearns staggering back to his corner. Ready to go, so it seemed. Round's bad for you. Leonard administered physical punishment. Emmanuel Stewart, your manager trainer, told me immediately after the fight, Tommy was never the same again after a blow in the sixth round. Is this true? It's very true, Howard. I definitely was in trouble in the sixth and the seventh round. Um, I couldn't get myself back together and get out there and box because um, it seemed like when I came out of the right, uh, came out for the seventh round, even though he had heard me the sixth, when I came out the seventh, I was still a little shaken up. I, I wasn't quite 
clear. My head wasn't clear. So basically my thought was to try to move and get away from, stay away from Ray. Do you recollect Emmanuel Stewart telling you after the seventh round, you've got to get back to boxing basics. You've got to move. You can outbox this man. Well, yes, I do. But um, the problem was I couldn't get myself back together as fast enough to get out there and try to move on my feet and dance away from it. So basically I was just constantly trying to move around close to the ropes as close as I can to stay up against the ropes so I guess in case he hit me again I would be able to remove from there. I see. Thomas, do you feel that you lost strength by paring down to 145 pounds? No, Howard. I didn't have any problem at all with my weight. Basically when I came in to Las Vegas I was weighing 148. And um, once I got in there, I started getting used to the atmosphere and started getting used to the heat and everything, humidity, then I brought my weight down mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. I noticed when I get up in the morning, I was quite low in the morning. When I wake up in the morning, I was weighing about 146. <laughs> Ray, did you think after the seventh round that you had him, that you'd put him away in the eighth? Well, I knew fully well I was under control because I normally if I hurt an opponent, I... I had the ability to finish him off. Why and didn't you in this case? Well, he didn't cooperate. <laughs> no, he surprised me because uh, the punches that he was able to withstand, I was quite surprised, and uh, that's when I think the mutual respect really, you know, came through. But I hurt Tommy with the left hook, and I felt that was the punch that could constantly do a number on it each time I threw it. But he surprised me, but then again, I knew that he was, would be in tip-top shape mm -hmm. in the ring. When did you start having trouble with vision, if ever, because of the severe welt under it. the eye? Don't touch it. <laughs> no, I think the, it was very sensitive, and the minute he hit it, I was subconscious about getting hit in again. And the swelling continued, and by the seventh and eighth round my peripheral vision it was impaired and i think if tommy had more experience he would have known this and he would have been able to throw punches pretty much roundhouse okay so much for the sixth and seventh rounds big rounds for leonard let's resume with the eighth round in a moment the bell for round eight and suddenly, again, the crowd rose as one for Sugar Ray Leonard. He may yet lose this fight. Certainly hasn't won it yet. But he's proved to a lot of people, all of those who wrote that he was a creature of television, that it was the Olympics that made him. He's an athlete. This kid, give him his due. He's swollen under the left eye. That from the long Hearns jab which was very effective in the early going. But last round, the most telling feature, he went to Hertz's body, and Hertz keeps his hands in front of his body. He doesn't like it there, and he tries to cover up that. Then he leaves himself open, A, for the uppercut, and B, for Ray to go over the top with the right lead. how the whole tempo has changed. It is Hearns trying to move. It is Leonard who is doing the stalk. Oh, trying to get down to the belly, Leonard was. He knows where he hurt him. Look at Hearns on his feet, moving, trying to be the boxer because he's been hurt. Hurt in the sixth round. Appeared ready to go in the seventh round. Staggered. Now he's the one bouncing and boxing. And so it becomes a marathon. Stamina. Look at Hearns. Has that right lead. Because why? Hearns is left down at his side. Look at Hearns all over that 20-foot ring. Give Tommy credit. He is boxing well. He's doing the very thing necessary to 
avoid further punishment that might take him out of there. And in the meantime, maybe he can recapture his earlier strength. Leonard must be ever wary because of Hearns' power and the reach. But that right lead becomes more and more telling. Then quickly down to the stomach, down to the stomach and up again. Now it's Leonard's task to take the movement out of Hearns. Before, before it was Hearns trying to take the movement out of Leonard. Now it's the converse. Look for the uppercut. Said he missed twice. Ten seconds left in the eighth round. The bell for round nine. Eighth round, clearly Leonard's, yet Leonard unable to take advantage of Hearns in the wake of the damage he had done in the sixth and seventh rounds. Why? Roll reversal. Hearns, surprisingly effective in his movements as a boxer, beginning perhaps to recoup his early round strength. A.B. Pearl, the third man in the ring, the three judges score the fight. Chuck Minka, Dwayne Ford, Lou Tabbitt, they're all veteran judges. Old change in rhythm in the eighth round as Hurds became the boxer and Leonard the stock. See the puffiness under Leonard's left eye? Leonard trying to get into that stomach. at five seconds into the ninth round. This crowd is alive. They don't know what to expect. Nobody knew. There were so many intangibles going into this fight, it was almost impossible to predict what would happen. Except for this, that Sugar Ray Leonard is not in this fight making the mistake he made against Roberto Duran in fight number one. He didn't come out to punch toe-to-toe -to, -toe to prove to a lot of his critics that he was a fighter in every respect, including being a great puncher. No, he came out to be what he is, a great athlete and a great boxer, and to fight a tactical fight and a strategic is learning something about Tommy Hearns that Tommy Hearns can adjust that he can change his fighting style that he is a far better boxer than he had been given credit for and Hearns I think has recouped his earlier powers again I see no evidence that he has been overtrained I see no evidence of fatigue quite the contrary there is, however, a wholesome respect for Ray Leonard's punching power. And that's what's changed the course of this fight. because this is a different Hearns. How much, if anything, all that bouncing around will take out of it. Only the passage of rounds will tell that. And it remains to be seen if Leonard will make a critical mistake. 
because it would only take one shot from Hearns to knock Leonard out or anybody else in that weight classification, such as the one-punch knockout power of Thomas Hearns. Tenth round action, a minute 20 seconds into the round. Manuel Stewart was right to tell Hearns to keep boxing. That way, Spider recaptured some of his powers and clearly some of his confidence. And it fought into the round. Look at the puffiness under Leonard's left eye. Hearn still gets in there. Fighting at long range, boxing, trying to use the edge and reach, he is much more effective. Because while Leonard is stalking him, he doesn't want to leave himself open. He's too intelligent a fighter for that. And he's not going to get records. How low Hearns keeps his hands. Trying to get the right up on. There's the right lead. Different Tommy Hearns, folks, is twenty seconds left. Round ten. Thomas Hearns, not sweating a lot. Maybe that's a result of paring down to 145 pounds. Sugar Ray Leonard, swollen under the left arm. Still possessed of his vision. No blood flow from above an eye to impair vision. Time perhaps to put this fight into perspective. Suddenly, a reversal of roles. That was because of Manny Stewart's instructions to Hearns after the seventh round. You've got to become the boxer, he said. And Hearns has done exactly that. Showing excellent movement, using his reach advantage, and all in all, giving Sugar Ray Leonard what for, in a way that Leonard never expected. Now here, in the 11th round, it is more of same. Leonard, the stalker, Hearns, a boxer. Good right by Hearns. Interesting to see Thomas Hearns in this light. Far more complete fighter than he had ever been taken. I thought Leonard was briefly stung at the end of the fourth round. But the real damage was done in the sixth, seventh, and eighth against Hearns by Leonard. Now Hearns is fighting a good round. His technique is beginning to work for him. Ninth and tenth rounds, little if anything happened. Now Hearns, you see him, taking charge. Not the kind of fight everyone expects. Hearns is beginning to get confident again, beginning to get aggressive. That left eye of Leonard's is swollen like a butterfly, but it's underneath. Now, Hearns, with renewed confidence, is taking chances, becoming aggressive, and he is dominating the action in round 11. He got, he got hurt then, Leonard. You saw that combination. It landed, and Hearns appears a different fighter.
tell you this, Hearn shows absolutely no sign of fatigue. Leonard trying to get to the belly again. But Leonard made wary by that combination scored by Hearn. Look at that crowd standing as one, chanting Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. And look at Hearns. What a different fighter he's become. The confidence brimming over, leading the crowd, waiting for the bell for the start of round 12. There it is. And Hearns comes out, sensing he's in charge. He has overwhelming confidence now. Clearly, Leonard's left eye is bothered. That puffiness is such. It may turn Leonard into a desperate fight. Who would have thought that Hearns might win this fight as a boxer? And Leonard lose it as a puncher. Round 12. But that's what may be happening here. Look at Leonard's eye and that reach employed in boxing style is becoming more and more effective in these late rounds. Minute 20 into round 12. You know, in the Randy Shields fight, Hearns proved something. He proved he could be patient. And he proved he could keep his boxing composure. He had gone down in the fifth. It was called a slip. Leonard with a good combination. And now he's proving all over again that he is patient, that he has ring presence, and that he can box. Use the biggest edge he has, the reach. It's been an ebb and flow in this fight. Gotta give Emmanuel Stewart credit in this fight and earns his corner. He's the one who changed his whole approach to the fight. Hurts after the seventh round, when his fighter was in deep trouble. to that Leonard eye. Now Hearns is in charge of this fight. Totally. As we approach the end of round 12. Okay, put the ice this back. Keep that there. Keep that there, Ray, baby. Right there. That's what you looked like then. The eye and unsightly thing. Dundee had just said, you're blowing it, kid, you're blowing it. You had to come out for the 13th. What was your thinking? Well, Angelo has a habit of saying, you're blowing it, you're blowing it. <laughs> I think it's something he picked up over the past years. But um, I knew the fight. At that point there, the last few rounds were very critical. And I felt it was a deciding factor. Also, it's funny how, because I was able to reminisce, sitting in that corner with my eye in the condition as it was, I thought back to Muhammad Ali and Larry Holmes because mm. I saw the same eye. My brother Roger, his last professional fight, the same condition. His left eye was completely swollen shut. And the things that go, go through one's mind, you know, you say, well, is it worth it now? And do you want to go back out there? I was completely dehydrated, I was tired, and um, I just convinced myself I really wanted it. I felt you came out with a frenzy born of desperation. 
No, I don't think it was desperation because I was still conscious of what I was doing. When, when I was moving away from Tommy, you know, it looks as though I was trying to run from desperation, but I was just trying to keep him away mm -hmm. from doing any further damage. Mm -hmm. Thomas, did you think you were in total control after that 12th round? Well, I felt that, how I felt that everything was looking more so towards my way because uh, I knew that I, after the, the seventh and eighth round, I knew that I had came out and began to box more. And I felt that uh, when I was boxing, I was definitely getting to Ray more so than ever. And that made me feel that I was in definite control. So it seemed to me, I must confess, Thomas, at that point in time. We'll pick up in a moment with round 13. The bell for round 13. Leonard's left eye in terrible condition. Perhaps an internal hemorrhage beneath the eye. It's that swollen. Looks that way. Telltale words from Angie Dundee to Leonard. Son, you are blowing it. You've got to start to fire again. You let him off the hook. You let him get away. You are blowing this fight. And Hearns, the clear aggressor. It's a slip, of course. Don't even take note. I'll tell you. No matter who wins or loses, a pair of truly great fighters for any age fighting in this intense heat, neither one giving quarter. It would have been so easy for Hurts to have quit in the sixth and seventh rounds, especially in this heat. But no, his corner, Emmanuel Stewart, change your style, become the boxer. And Hearns did, and he's still bouncing on those feet. The 145 weight that he came in at, totally misleading in terms of being overtrained. If ever a fighter showed stamina under oppressive conditions, Hearns has done that. Leonard trying to get back. Hearns hurt! Hearns hurt! Hearns ready to go! Oh, look at those... Look at that hand speed. All those unanswered blows. Hertz is ready to go. And indeed, he goes through the ropes. He said that was no knockdown. Davey Farrell, I believe, said that was not a knockdown. I've got to get the word from Davey Farrell on that. Hearns fighting back, but suddenly from nowhere, the courage that is Sugar Ray Leonard. Some television creation. <laughs> Hearns running for his life now. Only 30 seconds left in the round. It is the 13th round. And Ray falls upon some inner resource. And he is trying to put him away. And Hearns is virtually defenseless, holding now. Keep him up. Five seconds left. This time it's a knockdown. And there's no saving by the bell. Now the round is over. It went past the bell. A huge round out of nowhere for Sugar Ray Leonard. Shifting tides, ebb and flow. When have you seen a fight like this? Now let's take a look at that knockdown that was called no knockdown. Watch closely. That right, that's the one that started Hearns. He was wobbly from it, you could see that. Then the brilliant hand speed of Leonard. Countless unanswered blows, but Hearns still effective enough to cover against some of them. And then, through the ropes, but no knockdown according to Davy Pearl. Now the knockdown that was a knockdown. Hearns being leveled by Sugar Ray Leonard. Again, the ropes keeping him up. But there he goes through the ropes again. And this time the mandatory eight count. Now an aerial look at the arena. The crowd beside itself. 
waiting for the bell for round 14. Question, can Hearn survive? Tommy back to his boxing costume. damage in this fight or nearly so has been done by Sugar Ray Leonard this fight I gotta see how they score this fight because Hearns has won a lot of rounds get your hands on two great fighters just great Leonard turned desperate threw caution to the winds Utterly surprised Hearns in the last round, in the 13th. And the net result was, in my book, two knockdowns, only one officially given by Davy Pearl. But he could not floor Hearns officially until that second knock. Look at that! Hearns rubbery leg. Leonard has him. He knows it. Hearns is ready to go. He's asking Davy Pearl to stop the fight. Look at that. Sugar Ray Leonard proving to everybody who's ever watched boxing that here, yes, is an athlete. A minute 40 seconds into the 14th round. And he is teeing off on her. That's it. Sugar Ray Leonard has won by a technical knockout in the 14th round. About a minute, 45 seconds into the round. He is delirious with joy. He has every right to be. If ever a man proved himself, this man did. And so, too, did his glorious opponent, Thomas Hearns. The eyes glazed, bitterly disappointed. Only 22 with a great career still before him. And let's recap some of that action. Now watch closely, you'll see the right. That's it, that started Tommy on his way. Look at him staggering down the ringside there. And then, Leonard all over him. But Tommy somehow still reacting, still trying to cover, and in some cases succeeding. Again, the tremendous hand speed of Leonard. Davy Pearl watching the action. Mindful of many recent boxing deaths. Still, Hearns is reacting. What a fighter. You've never seen such gameness. And Leonard is pouring it on him. Finally, Pearl steps in, stops the contest. Leonard, the welterweight champion of the world. So that's the way it was. What was that phrase? Shifting tides, ebb and flow. Some of those rounds just remarkable. Others not but tactically, strongly interesting. I said, Thomas, just 22, you've got a great career still before you. You're undaunted by that defeat, aren't you? Well, definitely, I'm, I'm sort of upset myself um, because it's something that I really wanted, Howard, and I trained very hard for, and knowing that I came out defeated, you know, I'm, I'm very hurt inside. Still? Yes. It's hard to get over. Oh, definitely. But at the same time, you've come out, as has Ray, with an apparent almost friendship based upon mutuality of respect. Isn't well, that true? We were saying, um, basically, leading into the fight, people always thought it was Alan Moss between me and Ray. But basically, it was just, I looked at it as just um, two guys in the same weight division and both champions and some and one of us want to be we wanted to be just one champion unify the title and i felt that's where it should be and I, I guess ray felt the same way but uh there was never any animosity between mm -hmm. me and ray at all you want a rematch oh most definitely i would love to have a rematch with ray and basically we gotta ask ray <laughs> <laughs> what's would, your position would it be a rematch well i tell you there's so many guys that want rematches, and Tommy Harris, I, I took this time, I said, you deserve a lot of credit, Carol, you know, I take my hat off to you. But as Benitez, as Duran, as Kaluli wants to rematch, 
No question. Oh, yeah, Duran's talking. Rematch with Hearns. But uh, you've told me on camera you'll never uh, fight Duran again. But now I tell you everything, you know, I'm just saying <laughs> that to you. No, but really, I said if Duran can reach, can reaccept himself, and he's trying to do just that, I don't know how long it's going to take. It's going to take a long time. But I, I'd rather see the guys fight each other than I'll fight the winner. Quite naturally, it'd be Tommy. But I'd be more than happy to give him a rematch. No when? problem. Well, as soon as he admits that after the 14th round, was no way possible he could have continued. Because I think that the fans, you know, they, they made it possible for us to make the kind of persons that we are able to demand. I think, mm -hmm. don't be sincere or honest with yourself, but be honest with them because they are there. Will you admit, yes or no, what he's asking no, you to um, admit? No, I, I could not admit to that because I was, I was in complete control of myself. Uh, I wasn't out on my feet and I was able to protect myself. Uh, I thought, well, if it was anything, Howard, I thought that I should've got an eight count. Mm -hmm. And he should've, the referee should've been able to decide from there. Well, I understood, uh, to be honest, Davy Pearl's action, because one working as a referee these days always is mindful of the many unfortunate deaths we've had recently in boxing. Thank you, my friend. Congratulations on a really stirring performance. You're a thank great you. fighter and a fine fellow. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you, Mr. Al. Champion. As usual, call the fight perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Telling it like it is. That's the story. Leonard against Hearn.